It's going to take a lot more than that. Um, we've got, is it John? Uh, yes, it's John. How are you doing, John? I'm doing pretty good, Matt. And Don, how are you tonight? Hey, how's it going? We're good. Good. Um, you, you guys are kind of uh, touching on, on a large uh, a, a large base. And, and uh, so I comment on, on the moral issue earlier. Uh, the moral issue is God, God has his moral reality, and human beings have their moral reality. Our, our standard does not meet God's standard. And um, in, in order to go into his presence in, in the, once we die physically and move, and move into uh, the eternal world, that is when we do not measure up to God's standard. See, God, God loves us so much that he has given us free will, and, and in, within that free will, we're allowed to be atheists, we're allowed to be Christians, we're allowed to be uh, Muslims. We're allowed to go out and kill a person. If I want to walk out right now as a Christian, I can go out and kill someone if I, if I want to do that. Yeah, here, here's, because, the, here's the peculiar thing. Um, okay. What do we know about God's moral standards? I mean, is the Bible an accurate representation of his character? Uh, yes. Um, so, so God's morally okay with slavery, genocide, uh, human sacrifice? Uh, no, no, he's not. The Bible that, says he is. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me, let me okay. answer your question. Sure. Okay, and, and I'll, I'll tell you why God is not uh, for that. And, and the reason is, is that's where human, human beings own free will come into play. No, 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 no. Yes, you, hang on, hang on. Okay. Okay. If the yes. Bible, if the Bible says, and I'm, I'm going, I'm operating under your thing. We'll, we'll just skip the assumption that a God exists for the sake of argument. You well, said, hey, you went to seminary, you know. Um, I don't know. I believe that there, that in fact, no God exists. Um, okay. So I'm willing to, to go ahead with that assumption for the sake of this discussion. I asked if the Bible was an accurate representation of God's character. And, and by that, I, I guess it should have been more clear. When the Bible says that God commands or endorses something, is that God actually commanding or endorsing it? Or is that men claiming that God did and they got it wrong? Well, okay. The, the, we, we, okay, I'm, I'm kind of watching you on TV and it, it, it's... it's yeah, there's a, a little bit. There's a delay. Um, Just ignore the TV and focus on the phone. It's much new, easier. Future TV. That's yeah. the easiest thing. Okay. To do. Um, okay. As, as, okay. God. Uh, we we are God's creation. Uh, I understand. And, and and God uses us to spread the gospel to others. This he has also nothing. Uses, hang, he hang on, uses, John. Hang on, John. You're not answering Matt's question. Because this has nothing at all to do with my question. This is preaching. And well, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm no, getting no, there. no, you're not. So I'm going to back up. When the Bible okay. says God commands something, is it accurate? When God, when God commands something, it is, it is accurate, and it is true, and it is the standard. Okay, so, so the, Bible, the Bible's laws, the Ten Commandments, etc., that are supposedly come from God, specifically yes. endorse slavery. Where? Which, which commandment? Wow. Uh, not not the Ten Commandments. No, 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 not not the ten, not the Ten Commandments. The law. There's more than just the ten. There's 613 that you continue through. But the bulk of the law tells you exactly who you can enslave, how much you can cost, how much it costs to sell them, how to identify them by holding their ear up to the door and driving all through it. Have you not read that part of the Bible? The the commandment about. Hang on. Have you not read that part of the Bible? What? Have you not read the story of Jephthah who offered to sacrifice the first thing that comes out of his house to God if God would let him win, win this battle? God supposedly does let him win the battle knowing in advance that it would be his daughter. Therefore, God has endorsed human sacrifice. Did you not read that part of the Bible? No, I didn't. And, and, then, and, then how can you tell me that the Bible is an accurate representation of God? And by the way, no. how do you make that judgment? What, what, is it? How do you, what is your methodology for determining that the Bible is an accurate character portrayal of God? And okay, it, did, 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 they go, did they go through with the sacrifice? Yes. Okay, so then, then at, at that point, if God allowed that sacrifice to go through, 
if he allowed, allowed that individual to sacrifice that other individual, that there was a bigger purpose and a bigger plan for that. Okay, I'm glad you said that because now we're done. And here's why. You just said that if that's what happened, and, and it is, you can go read your Bible. I'm sorry that you don't know it as well as we do, uh, but, yeah. but it's there. Um, that okay, to, yeah, that I, to I, me, I hang, hang on, that to me tells me that if there is a God, and this is an accurate representation of his moral standard, then mine is superior. I don't care what his standard is. I don't care that I don't live up to it because he supports slavery. He supports yeah. child sacrifice. He rewards belief over deeds. He doesn't care a whit what your life is like. He cares what you believe. He cares, yeah, he, he, endows, he, he endows salvation, depending on what your soteriological claims are, based on faith or grace or anything else. Yes, deeds come along afterwards, but the, the tenet of Christianity, for at least most beliefs, is that you can live a good and decent life and still yeah. fry in hell. What, um, he com what he commands is, is, is that he is the Lord of all human life. Yes, and I'm all, I also have a problem with that, because I don't think that is a moral standard that anyone, including a God, should hold. I, I, I have yet to find an example of a moral standard of this character in your, in your holy book okay, that I find then, morally correct. Then I have I have a question for you. Okay. Then then if your if your moral standard is so superior to the living God, it's standard, moral superior. It's morally it superior to me. Then explain it to me and convert me. Um, my moral standard is superior to the character. Matter of fact, my moral standards are superior to the, the almost any character in the Bible. Um, I have no problem with that. I've said it many times. I even explained it to Ray Comfort before. Um, I, you want, I could maybe rattle off a list of things that I might consider to be sins. Um, Matt hasn't killed anybody. I, How about that? I, yeah, I, I, I think that anybody <laughs> who advocates slavery, endorses slavery, is morally inferior. I think that anybody who advocates genocide and slaughter um, is morally inferior. I think that any, hang on, hang on. I think that anybody who advocates infinite punishment or infinite reward for finite crimes and, and deeds is morally inferior. I think that anybody who is supposedly omniscient and omnipotent and omnibenevolent who creates a system knowing that people are going to not be able to live up to his standards spends an eternity punishing them or at, at least many thousands of years punishing them trying to correct his mistakes over and over again. Sadistic. He creates Adam and Eve, they fail, he, he banishes them out of the garden, then there's the Tower of Babel, then there's the Flood, and then there's all the, well actually there's the Flood and then the Tower of Babel, sorry I got that backwards. It's failure after failure after failure after failure after failure, and then finally it culminates in the only loophole that the creator of all the laws of the universe can come up with. Why didn't he just forgive everybody or change the laws, but instead he has to create a loophole where he comes down bodily and sacrifices himself to himself himself to act as a loophole for a rule that he created. It's absurd. It is yeah. laughably absurd and it's immoral. No, you're, you're not looking. You're, there, there, there are two entities. You, you have a fallen angel named Lucifer. That, and he's that, more powerful? What's that? He's more powerful? No, he's Then not why doesn't powerful. God get rid of him? Because God is not God's character. Oh, not God's character. okay, then we have yet another moral thing where I'm superior, because we have another area where I'm morally superior, because if I created a bunch of things, and I wanted and I loved and cared about these people, but something else that I created was screwing up their lives, I'd get rid of it. That's in my character. That's morally correct. Your God's an ass. Okay, I, well, okay. Let, let me, let me, let me uh, say it in this light. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it's, it's... Okay, you, you have, say, my children. Let, let's just take my children, for, for instance, and, and then they are, you know, going out and committing a, a, a crime. They join a gang and yeah. go out and commit, commit a, a murder. Should I, as a father, say, you must go to prison? Yes. And do your time? Yes. Okay, then that's what Jesus no. is saying when no. he does that. No, you're, no, you got it kind of wrong. You, hang on, order. hang on. You got it kind of wrong. Um, if you're going to consider the children analogy, what what Jesus or your God has done is said that there are things that your children can do, not loving you being the primary one, which makes them deserve to be locked up in the basement and tortured forever. Okay, Matt. Let, let is there anything? Matter. Is there anything that your kids could ever do? Make you do anything remotely like that, even for a short time? 